What in the Margaritaville is this? It's a Margarita Matrix. <laughs> A little history about the margarita. According to cocktail historian David Wondrich, the margarita is related to a popular Mexican drink, the Daisy. Now, I'm going to correct there. Not a popular Mexican drink, the Daisy. The Daisy was a popular drink. The Daisy, uh, you can get a Daisy a whole bunch of different ways in the late 1800s. It was typically made with cognac or brandy, actually. Um, in Mexico, they made it with tequila, and they called it a margarita because uh, the Spanish word for Daisy is margarita. So anybody who tells you that this was a drink that was invented for like a famous dancer or somebody who was a singer or a star or something like that that was named Margarita or that it was invented at a hotel called Margarita, this is not true. It's, I mean, it's literally Daisy translated into Spanish. That's all it is. It's a Daisy. So here's the deal. Um, this is a Margarita Matrix. What is it? The idea is let's find the best cross section of ingredients to use to make a particular cocktail, a popular cocktail. So you build a matrix. That's the best way. It's a brute force solution. Try every possible combination. Now, in truth, every possible combination, obviously I can't do that. I had to narrow it down. And so what this is, is a margarita matrix using only Blanco tequilas that are affordable. Okay. None of these are crazy ultra premium, I don't think. And that I think covers the brands people are going to demand that I, that to see. Okay. What spec for this margarita am I using? This is the very most basic spec margarita I could. It is two parts tequila, one part lime, one part um, triple sec, one part curacao, whatever it is that happens to be the orange liqueur in that given cocktail. A lot of people like orange juice in a margarita. My dad does. A lot of people like a little, you know, quarter ounce or something like that, a little bit of simple. Traditionally, 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 the margarita should not include those things. Um, and it's a shaken drink that is served up. So these are half scale 211 spec margaritas. Uh, salt the rim. I actually like a salted rim on my margarita or like a 50 50 where I have the option on any given sip. Here's the thing for the purposes of this test, that introduces a uncontrollable variable because as I'm picking things up and moving them, bits of salt will drop into other glasses. And I figured, you know what, just for uniformity, let's just do it all unsalted. A margarita is a shaken drink and it really needs to be a shaken drink. And a shaken drink is a completely different thing from a stirred drink. You can't just add cold water to it. You know, there's fruit pulp here that needs to be um, arom aromatized. You know, like we have to oxygenate it. We have to shake it. It has to have that agitation. So what I've done is I've poured the ingredients for each one into these. And then as I go down the line, I will dump that drink, this cocktail, straight into a shaker with some ice, shake it up on the spot, and immediately dump it right back into the glass so I can drink and test it very fresh, right out of the shaker while it is still full of air, full of life. Um, and of course, I can go back and do a comparative test after if I need to go back and forth on this line a little bit, so be it. But the idea is that each drink will be presented at least on its first sip straight from the shaker as it should be. Uh, one thing I want to say is that these, these tequilas, um, which I have chosen here, if you have a hard time finding liquor locally, um, your li liquor store is very far away, it is poorly stocked, I'm partnered with Curiata. If you go to drink.curiata.com, you will find yourself at the How to Drink collection of spirits, stuff that I've used on the show, stuff I love, I use all the time. If you want to follow along at home, it's a great way to stock up. Curiata currently services, I think, 28 or 30 now states of the U.S., which do represent, I think, 80% of the U.S. population. If you're looking to pick up any of the bottles I use on the series and you want to follow along at home, drink.curiata.com has you covered. They ship, I think, next day. Uh, shipping is not free, but if you order $200 and you use code HOWTODRINK at checkout, you will get free shipping every single time, all the time. That's not like just a promotion. That's forever, as far as I know. Um, and I don't know. I mean, if you're not buying that often, $200 a bar run is not hard to hit. I did this whole thing one other time. I did a Manhattan Matrix, okay, where I drank um, 42 Manhattans. I'm going to put a link to that episode below. Some things went wrong in that episode. I had to record a special episode opening because, like, what happened was I did not quantify how large a sip my sip was. I have since measured the size of my sip. My casual sip is like an ounce and a half because I have a gigantic Joe E. Brown mouth. Nobody's perfect. I don't know if you know who that is, he's a pre-code actor from the 30s. That's in a vlog post that you can find on my Patreon. If that's the kind of thing that interests you, it's at patreon.com slash how to drink. So the show has deemed it satisfactory to purchase me this lovely stainless steel spit bucket so that I may spittoon my tastes when we do these kinds of multi-drink episodes. Whether or not you see it being used in the actual edit that actually comes out here, I 
I can't promise that it will because it might make for bad content. Rest assured, I am using the spit bucket to protect myself. I do not want to encourage any kind of binge drinking or bad habits with alcohol, right? Um, doing this as safely as I possibly can. And the other factor too, is that when I did the Manhattan Matrix, we were in full on lockdown. Uh, since then, I'm not alone. I have a, I have a spotter here. I have Meredith, uh, my co-producer is with me. We are vaccinated humans. Uh, Vax crew, you represent, I don't know. Well, that sounds terrible. Okay, so I guess that's it, really. I'm ready to start shaking and tasting. Shake a taste, ooh, shake a taste. I should make a pin out of that, that's a good one. So, first drink, here we go. I'm gonna pour it in. Okay, margarita one, here we go. This is Fortaleza with triple sec and lime. Beautiful color, looks like a margarita. I gotta tell you, right off the bat, that's a very well-balanced margarita. So one thing I can tell you about this, the Hiram and Walker, is that this is sweet. This is way sweeter than the other ones. Sort of our bottom shelf option here. Let's see how it holds up too, it might be very interesting. If that is as good as or beats other things. And this unsweetened speck, it can be a little tart and a little dry. Here, Fortaleza crossed with Hiram Walker and lime, I don't feel like it's overly tart or too dry at all. This is nicely balanced. It might be missing some sharpness. It might be a little too round, a little too sweet maybe. Honestly, yeah, because I was expecting something a little bit more bracing, so it's missing there, but not bad. Let's go to dry curacao right after this. So far, I've been very lucky. Uh, I think I've dodged the bullet on this hair loss thing, right? 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 But if things were thinning out, I'd go with Keeps to prevent hair loss, which is convenient because they happen to be the sponsor of this episode. Look, two out of three guys are gonna experience some hair loss by the time they're 35. And if that's you, uh, maybe you wanna do something about it. Keeps connects you with a licensed doctor to figure out the right treatment for your specific situation. And they ship it to you every three months. And you can message your Keeps doctor anytime, 24 hours a day, with any questions you have about your treatment. There's only a couple of medications that are FDA approved to treat hair loss, and Keeps is built around prescribing and supplying you with the generic versions of those medications, which makes it affordable and simple, because you can do all of this from the comfort of your home. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash how to drink, or use the link in the description and pinned comment below to receive 50% off your first order at K-E-E-P-S dot com slash how to drink. Okay, back to the show. Okay, let's move on to Fortaleza with dry curacao. That has an extra dimension to it. Fortaleza with Hiram Walker is much sweeter. Fortaleza with dry curacao though, it's not too dry. It's not very dry, but there's an extra turn in the evolution there. What is it that I'm getting? It has a very, um, the lime is a little bit more present for starters. It has a little bit more acidity to it. I can't put my finger on what that extra specific evolutionary point is. It's very distantly adjacent, if this makes any sense, to a bubblegum note that you might get from a bourbon because sometimes bourbons and whiskeys will have that a little bit. It's not the same thing, or maybe if it is, it's just like a very tiny little hint, just a wisp of it. But it does add an extra twisty turn to the evolution that is of interest. It's interesting. So on the merits, I would say that that's probably better, but this is easier to drink because it's sweeter. So depending on who you know, you're making it for, they might actually prefer this. So moving on, we're gonna do Fortaleza with the Cointreau. I got to do a uh, little uh, short film thing with Cointreau. They put me in like a little mini romantic comedy. Uh, I'll put a link to that below. They'll appreciate that. Maybe you'll appreciate it. It was silly. It was fun. And so I like Quantro. We're good friends. I like them a lot, but they didn't pay for this episode. So they're on the chopping block. Okay. So here we go. Quantro Fortaleza. I think that might be some, I know we didn't add any salt, but that has a saltiness to it. It's the tartest. It's the most tart of the three. It is the most dry, most bracing, least sweet of these three. I wouldn't send any of these back though. The variations. You know, all Fortaleza, they're all pretty good. So this is now Fortaleza with Grand Marnier. Now I did an episode a long time ago called What is Triple Sec? I shot that in the living room of my old apartment on an iPhone, I think. In my findings, I discovered that Grand Marnier and Dry Curacao were pretty similar. So we'll see, maybe this will be a lot like the other one. One question you might be wondering is why Blanco tequila? Well, although I typically would make mine, with a Reposado, I think really this is a drink that calls for a Blanco. Traditionally it would be made with Blanco, any guide you look up is probably going to recommend using a Blanco. Probably most people make theirs with Blancos. It just seemed like I had to narrow some variables down because otherwise I'm looking at thousands of bottles of tequila um, and just, and, and how to make the playing field level. Well, there are going to be Blancos. We're going to look all Blancos. Hmm. No, that's nothing like anything else. I don't like it. 
This is the one I don't like. There's like a banana thing going on in there. There's a little bit of a banana funk fruit thing that none of the other three had. It's still tart. It's not sweet. I mean, it's probably sweeter than the Cointreau. I'm gonna bring my spit bucket because this kind of motion is where I get into trouble going back and forth. Yeah, it's sweeter than that, but not sweeter than this, not sweeter than the triple sec. By comparison, this tastes like candy. This tastes like taking Sour Patch Kids and melting them down or something almost. But hold on, the real question is, how does it compare to the dry curacao? Dry curacao tastes so fresh. It has such a lofty, airy freshness to it compared to the others. I really like that now that I've gone back and forth. Let's try this again. There's like a weird off note there. It, it's, a, it's a little bit like a rum funk, but it's not desirable here. I don't love that. Sorry. Let's move on to the Jose Cuervo 1800. Okay, so Jose Cuervo with the triple sec. Very sweet. Very, very sweet. I'm curious to see how it compares to the other Cuervo. I said Cuervo, I meant the other triple sec. I gotta tell you what, in the presence of this triple sec, I get no difference between these two. They taste identical. All I taste is a sweet orange liqueur. The tequila is kind of lost. And these are pretty young tequila. These are all Blanco tequilas. I should have brash flavors that are loud. Both of these are enjoyable. Both are very sweet though. They're sweet margaritas, but I can't tell the difference. <laughs> and I can tell you, I can tell the difference between these two tequilas, so. Okay, this is Jose Cuervo 1800. Maybe I should just say 1800 because I took Jose Cuervo off the bottle. Uh, crossed by Curacao. By the way, I mentioned that before. Uh, whoa, 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 I made something. Eh, I took Jose Cuervo off there. Why did they do that? And some people in the comments thought like there was some cancel culture bullshit, which isn't a thing. But in actuality, it, it kind of was in that Jose Cuervo, I think, got a reputation for like frat binge drinking and just like cheap ass tequila. And so they didn't want that association anymore, as far as I know, and they switched it to 1800. And I'm gonna confirm that after I shoot this. And if I'm wrong, this doesn't exist. Here we go, 1800 and dry curacao. That has that bubblegum note again. Check my palate. Ooh, that has like a really kind of long lasting um, note in the evolution of like this very pleasant bubblegum. Specifically, the little piece of bubblegum that was at the bottom of a screwball, uh, that ice cream cone thing on the ice cream truck in the, if you were a kid in, when I was a kid. So the Cuervo Dry Carousel is actually, or the 1800 Dry Carousel is really interesting. That's actually really good. It's, un, it's a little different than the rest. It's well balanced. It is tart, balanced by a bit of sweetness with some interesting notes in the evolution that I'm not finding elsewhere. So that is a good combo. This is becoming interesting. Now we're seeing how different modifiers work better or worse with different spirits. And that's good. This means this episode isn't totally a waste of time. <laughs> it's not just like, well, whatever you do, it's gonna be best with this, you know? <laughs> Let's do 1800 with the Cointreau and see how the 1800 is with the Cointreau. Okay, here we go. Jose Cuervo, or 1800, I should say, with Cointreau. Hmm, it's okay. It's tart up front. It's a little sweet on the back. It doesn't have any different flavor notes that come up to four, like it does with the, the dry curacao, where you get some interesting bubble gummy notes. Um, it's just tart, sweet, not bad. Maybe not the best pairing for the 1800. Okay, here we go. Uh, 1800 and Grand Marnier. Oh, I like that. Do I like that? I don't know, it has an unusual turn in it. I think ultimately that tastes like a less sweet version of the Hiram Walker Circle Sec. I still think that the this one had the most interesting evolution notes, no question. So for the 1800, the dry curacao is the best. Now I'm gonna say there's slightly different types, styles of margarita, but let's do this. My favorite from the Fortaleza was the Cointreau. My favorite from the 1800 was the dry curacao. Let's see how they compete against each other and then we'll keep doing that as we go down the line. Fortaleza with um, Cointreau. 1800 with dry curacao. It's a tough call. I, honestly, I think I like the 1800 with the dry curacao a little better. It's a little sweeter. No, I like the Cointreau Fortaleza just slightly better. Just slightly. I'm trying to imagine like it's a really hot day, mid direct sunlight, and it's like 95 degrees. Which one's more refreshing? And it's the, the drier one, so. Let's move on to Don Julio Blanco with triple sec. Wow, the Don Julio Stands up to the triple sec a lot better. The triple sec is moderated. It tastes less sweet here than it does in the 1800 and I'm gonna assume the Fortaleza as well. 
And that one just tastes like orange candy. That's not bad. I kind of like that. It's a bit at the sweeter end of the spectrum, but it's not too sweet at all. Julio and triple sec. Interesting. Okay. It's funny too. I haven't had a margarita in a really long time and somebody called me out on my recipe not having any sweetness in it. And I was like, I just haven't made one in a while. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. I wonder if I still feel that way. I do. I still like them unsweetened like this. This is way better. They don't need sugar. They're fine. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Don Julio and dry curacao. There's like an off note there. There's like a bitterness to that that I don't really love. Of between these, I think the Don Julio pairs better with the triple sec better. It needed the extra little sweetness, but it's like so, there's some notes in here that are taming the sweetness of the triple sec. But the curacao, which is less sweet, is a bad pairing. I'm gonna bet that the triple sec is the best one of this line, which is fascinating to me. Fascinating, truly fascinating. Okay, so here we go, Don Julio. Don Julio with Coantero. Weird. Okay, you know what it is. This is a terrible tasting note. And I'm gonna tell you, I don't find it entirely unpleasant. It is unique. And it's probably undesirable. It could be an acquired taste. I'm gonna pass on it, it's not my fave. But what the note is, is it tastes like, like the fluid you pour onto a charcoal grill to light it up. Like the smell of uh, grill starter fluid. There's just a touch of that note, that kind of metallic sweetness. I don't know what you would call that smell because it doesn't quite smell like gasoline. Like it has its own aroma, but it has that kind of a, a flavor like that smell. In addition to the other standard things that you would find in a margarita, that's what stands out. A little fuel-y. If I wasn't doing a side-by-side, -side, I might not even detect it as being like a standout thing. It's pretty subtle. But doing a side-by-side, side, side by side, I don't think it's what I would pick if I was picking a margarita for myself. That said, if I didn't have another margarita right next to it, made a different way to compare to it, would I say, oh, this is weird? Probably not. I'd probably just be like, that's fine. And so that was the Don Julio crossed by Cointreau. Not a good combo. Interesting to note, Fortaleza crossed by Cointreau, my favorite Fortaleza. Um, so interesting. So far to the Don Julio, I like best with the, the Hireman Walker. So this is uh, Don Julio with the Grand Marnier. Is it Grand Marnier or Grand Marnier? Is there a D in it? No, there's a D, it's Grand. I always pronounce it Grand Marnier. Do we go Mid-Atlantic with it, honey? Yes, darling, we, pro we pronounce it in the Mid-Atlantic style with round tones. Grand Marnier. Moses supposes. Better finish than start. It, it starts out overly bitter and it evolves to a sweeter, more rounded out place, but it starts out bitter, unpleasant. Yeah, I don't love that. Oh yeah, that's bad aftertaste there. So interestingly, the Don Julio seems to benefit from sweetness. And to that end, the triple sec is the best expression for the Don Julio. Now what's interesting about that is that I quite liked this when it was all said and done. I thought this was quite good, Don Julio with triple sec. But how does it compare to my so far reigning champ, the Fortaleza and Contra? Fortaleza and Cointreau has a more delicate evolution, a little rounder, it's a little bit better, a little more interesting. But this is not bad, this is, I mean, that is a much more expensive cocktail. So, I mean, <laughs> Julio Triple Sec is right behind it in terms of being on point. And actually, I gotta tell you too, I think it's sort of telling that they have like almost the exact same color and visual presentation. Right? So I would say that these two drinks, weirdly, are very similar with this one edging it out in terms of just having a better upfront, a better opening, a rounder, more interesting, easing into all the flavors and stuff like that than the Julio. But this isn't bad with the triple sec. So let's move on to Espelon, um, a tequila I don't think I've ever had actually. Espelon, Espelon, Espelon. Tequila Espelon with uh, triple sec. Here we go. Very sweet. That's kind of like the Fortaleza with the triple sec. This one had a late arriving tart turn, a little tart note that came up that made it a little bit more interesting, but it's very sweet. Not bad, but very sweet. Okay, Espelon with the uh, dry curacao. La da 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 da. Ah! So this is um, Espelon with dry curacao. I started out interesting, but it turned bad. That is a terrible combo. Oh man. 
It started out with a really nice, like familiar kind of bubblegummy kind of cognac note, which was nice. And then somewhere along the evolution, it just turned into like burning rubber. That was truly um, bad. And I don't normally just say bad, but I, honestly, that is a note that I don't think anybody will enjoy. I think we can say that a burning rubber is an objectively bad taste. I mean, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna correct myself because I don't know that that's true because people who really like super, you know, brutal mezcals and, and um, Isla Scotches. The thing about that though is that that's not a margarita, right? Like if you want that, you want that, you're gonna find that in those spirits that you're looking for. You wouldn't be asking for a margarita if you expected burning rubber. So I'm gonna correct myself a second time and say that in this context of it being a margarita, it's bad. I would not recommend that dry curacao and Espelon combination. I think that's bad. Um, I just think it's fucking bad. Okay, let's move it along. Espelon and Coantaro. My arms are getting tired. Espelon and Cointreau. Espelon and Cointreau. Espelon and Cointreau. Espelon. Espelon and Cointreau. I think I have to say it like that. Espelon. I don't know enough about tavella, uh, telenovelas to make any appropriate jokes about telenovelas here but I would if I did. Okay, Espelon and Cointreau. So here's the thing. This has a very, very nicely balanced opening. The tart, sweet combo is in perfect harmony on the front of this drink. And that lingers for a little while and it evolves. It seems like it's going in this very round, pleasant, tart, balanced, perfect kind of way. And then just this little bit of, sometimes it's burning rubber, but I think maybe it's sometimes it's just like, um, like um, disinfectant, like cleaner, like kind of thing. Very subtle, very, very subtle. So subtle that to be perfectly honest, it still might be, it might be my favorite Espelon because it's so subtle, but it is not desirable. It is an off note. It's a very subtly off, a subtle off note, but it's, it means it's just, just shy of perfect. Again, that's so far, I think my favorite of the Espelons. So let's try the Grand Marnier. Espelon and Grand Marnier. Tastes like, like a limeade. It doesn't even taste like alcohol. Overly bitter, overly tart. I don't hate it. Might be my second favorite of the Espelons. Um, I think the Cointreau Espelon is better. Yeah, definitely. Overall Espelon, I already know the answer to this. Um, I prefer the Fortaleza to the Cointreau. Um, and the Espelon is not my favorite tequila in this lineup. All of these were serviceable drinks. It's just, if you're gonna go split ding hairs, I think that the other tequilas performed better in general. We're going to take a short break to get this camera over my head turned back on and also to add one more row of drinks. So we realized that we had neglected to include Patron in this lineup. That was a mistake. So we've corrected it. The Patron is back in the show. And so I've got to go back and do this Patron row. And we thought about putting the Patron row at the end, but that would have meant shifting everything, which would have changed the alignment. We left our lime juice in the shot. We, it would have meant shifting everything. So we just put it at the beginning. And so we're gonna do the Patron row. So if you were waiting for the Patron, it's time for Patron. Patron and uh, triple sec. It's not bad. Patron's another one that's like drying out the triple sec pretty well. That's interesting. I don't need that. That's not bad at all. It is pretty one-dimensional. It's just sweet and tart in balance. Do you get a lot of tequila notes? No, not really. Maybe there's a little grassiness to it. And that might be true for all of these as well, by the way. But it does seem to knock down the sweetness of the triple sec, which is good if you're working with triple sec, right? Okay, Patron and Dry Curacao. I'll say this, it's unusually tart for the Dry Curacao. The dry Curacao usually presents as having a little more character. This really pairs it down to just being tart. There's really nothing else going on there. Which, I mean, I think in my brain that makes a lot of sense because Patron paired well with something very sweet. So something that's a little moderated in sweetness, it's probably gonna be overpoweringly tart. Makes sense. Okay, moving along. So this is Patron with Cointreau. That's bone rye. That is so tart, wow. Ah, that's too tart. Honestly, that tastes just a little bit like vomit in my mouth, just a little tastes like vomit, actually, a touch. That's too tart. Like bile, it tastes like bile. Okay, so now let's do Patron with Grand Marnier. Not bad. Honestly, ounce for ounce, I like it better with the triple sec. This is still a little too tart. 
So for the Patron, I think my favorite is the triple sec. And if I were to compare that to my favorite from the Fortaleza, which so far is my reigning champ, I think, way more character here. You get a lot more of the grassy agave notes of the tequila with this pairing than you do with this pairing. And yet it's balanced. Whereas here it's not balanced. And let's move on to um, Casamigos. This is of course, famously the George Clooney tequila. Um, I heard that when they were testing names, they considered Clunquila, but they decided that that was not a good name for it, Clunquila. It tested poorly in all markets, actually, all of them. Okay, here we go. Um, Casamigos and Triple Sec. So here we go. Casamigos, the house of friends. I think that's what it means, Casamigos, house friends, ha friends house, friends, friendly house. Is that friendly house, house of friends, friends in a house, house with friends, house friends, houses that are friends, uh, Casamigos. That is a candy-like cocktail. Ooh, there is like a legit cotton candy aftertaste to that. That is really kind of surprising actually. Um, that is sweet, candy-like and surprising, which mm, that's cool. Less candy-like in its sweetness than the Fortaleza with the triple sec, but yet more like specifically has a cotton candy aftertaste, you know? That's interesting. Okay, uh, this is Casamigos with dry curacao. I like this bottle under my left arm. I can use it as a rest. It's making things a little easier for me. Okay, here we go. Casamigos with dry curacao. So <laughs> that cotton candy finish is a Casamigos then. That is Casamigos because I'm getting it here as well. I like it, it's cool. I, I like this even better. This is balanced and tart and not too sweet, but it has that really cool like cotton candy finish, which is just fun. I mean, you don't see that a lot. That is enjoyable. I like that a lot. I'm curious to see how this goes on the next one. Uh, I gotta say right now, Casamigos might be my fave for all of these. <laughs> just because it's so unexpected yet balanced in both of these drinks and surprising, but not um, not in a way that detracts from it being a margarita at all. Like it's just like an extra little plus, a little something extra, I like that. Damn it, George, you beautiful bastard. You're a perfect man and you make perfect tequila too. I got nothing on you, George. Ah! So Casamigos with Cointreau, let's see how it performs. The Cointreau takes away the, the aftertaste of cotton candy. Oh, it's there, it's just really subtle. It's almost um, e ephemeral. It's almost like as if you're smelling a whiff of it like a mile down the road. You're on your way to the carnival or something like that. So in that case, I would say that it is kind of diminishing what is unique about this tequila and cool. I would say that that is not my fave. So far, my favorite for Casamigos is still the dry curacao. Okay, moving on. Let's finish out Casamigos. This is Casamigos with Grand. Grand Marnier. Regular Marnier? No, the Grand Marnier. Oh, sure. Oh, 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 oh. We've had an incident. It is the first time I've broke a bottle in this bar. You beautiful bastard. All right, well, I'll just put you back there. Well, I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, so this is Casamigos with Grand Marnier. Surprisingly dry. Very, very tart, but we still have our cotton candy finish, so I don't hate that. On the whole, I prefer the Casamigos with the dry curacao, but the Grand Marnier might be my second favorite for the Casamigos. Casamigos, pretty good. Casamigos dry curacao versus Fortaleza Cointreau. I gotta say, Casamigos dry curacao is not my favorite. This is now the winner. Well, I've saved the last for last, um, and it is this stuff called um, La Tromba. La Tromba, which was Tromba tequila, which was a kind of a whim buy. I just saw it and bought it. Um, and then uh, in the process of uh, doing this, we broke the bottle. So here is its edifice, but we'd already poured our shots into these um, cocktails. So let's see how it performed despite now being razor sharp and a, a health hazard. Because it might be the winner, we don't know. Okay, this is Tequila Tromba. <laughs> tequila Tromba Blanco. Hey, that's pretty good with the triple sec. That's not bad at all. There's like um, a minty sort of finish to it. Not minty, but like in the way that I feel like you sometimes get like menthol notes on tequilas and I'm getting that here, 
with the triple sec pairing. Otherwise it's um, on the sweeter end of the spectrum as everything with the triple sec has been pretty much, but enjoyable. With a strong menthol finish, which is interesting. Not minty, not cold like mint, mint mint, like brushing your teeth mint, but like that menthol taste. I hope that conveys. Okay, here we go. This is uh, La Tromba, te I'm sorry, Tequila Tromba, tequila, tequila Tromba with dry curacao. Like fresh cut grass and peanuts, weird. Um, fresh cut grass, peanuts, and a little bit menthol. It's not bad, it's pretty good. Balanced, tart, not overly sweet. Okay, tequila trombo with Cointreau. Trombo Cointreau. Very well balanced, on the tart end of the spectrum, unsweet, dry. Interesting sweet grass kind of finish, but ultimately my initial reaction was like uninspiring. It's just like very, it's just like a tart thing. It's not a lot going on to in there. Um, it's not blowing my mind. Kind of that menthol thing just showed up, shows up late. Okay, and so that brings us to Tequila Tromba Blanco with Grand Marnier. That I don't like. It's just overly tart. It's super tart. Aggressively, unpleasantly tart. Honestly, for the Tromba, Tromba, it's very sweet by comparison. I think the um, Dry Curacao was the best bet for that one. I think of this 28 drink matrix, my favorite one is this Casamigos with the dry curacao. By far. It's so interesting. I've, I've just, I mean, to just take lime juice, dry curacao, and tequila and get something that tastes like, yeah, of course you get lime, sour, sweet and sour, margarita flavors, but also like all that fresh cut grass and stuff that you get with like a, a good tequila, but also like the bubblegum and, and um, cotton candy, the bubblegum and cotton candy thing. It's just so unique. It's very cool. And it takes nothing away from it as a margarita. I, I don't find it off-putting at all. I think that's fascinating. The, the overall, I liked the dry curacao best with all of these. Although amusingly, not with the tequila that I often cite as my favorite tequila. But in fairness, I don't have the most cemented opinions on tequila. So I picked one, I liked it, I have no opinion. You know, I don't object to it. I've also, I've also often cited Casamigos as one that I like a lot. So most of the, mostly dry curacao was very good. And then the follow-up to dry curacao, I liked quite a few with the Cointreau. And the triple sec is very sweet. So the triple sec, it's interesting. It's like the cheap way to go. And if you have a cheap tequila that you kind of want to hide, it also will work well with that. It also, also happens to work really well with some of these louder tequilas, like the Patron or the Espelon, or I think the Don Julio, I also like that, but we'll check that out anyway. The Grand Marnier didn't work out well in any of them. It was just bad. Um, I don't think Grand Marnier belongs in a margarita. Let's say that that's a finding from this episode. This has been Matrix number two, the Margarita Matrix. If you enjoyed this and you're still watching and you were hungry for more, why don't you check out the uh, the Manhattan Matrix, also known as the episode that tried to kill me. I, I, yeah, I think probably the next Matrix will be a dry martini. Why don't you let me know in the comments which Matrix you actually want? Because if you don't tell me any different, I'm going to do a dry martini. It just seems logical to my mind. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this show, I'm on Twitter at How to Drink. I'm on Instagram at How to Drink. I am on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink if you want to see the parts of this episode that didn't make the edit. If you want to see the vlog that I did about making the, the Manhattan Matrix, uh, that'll be over there. Uh, we do some custom pins for patrons. Um, so, you know, a little extras. I'm on Twitch sometimes at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. I'm on TikTok now too. Greg from HTD is on the TikTok. I have posted I, I have posted once or two times. No, I'm still entertaining what I could do with the TikTok. So. Stay tuned on that front. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this episode, why don't you check out one of these other episodes that will be up for the next 15 seconds. 15 second close out. That's how much time YouTube gives you. You got 15 seconds to get out of the episode and into another one. There's episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four. They're all for you.